Well, he's, oh, I know my light was on. Sorry, Tuck, let me put my finger over that. Hold on, guys. Technical difficulties. What's happening? Uh, that didn't help. Not one bit. Nothing like a nice, steamy swim before bed. Isn't that right, Tuck? Isn't that right, Tuck? Don't look at the light. Don't look at the light. I'm looking for your dog eyeballs. It's actually pretty chilly outside, so I should probably go in and get some rest. Shower first because I am covered. Why would you shake off while you're in the water? That doesn't make any sense at all. Covered in dog hair. That's what I was going to say. Okay. Got to like actually do something plant wise, right? I'll see you guys in the morning. Ooh. Already a busy morning. It's supposed to start raining here like any minute and rain all day. So I just like, I had to get something done out here. So I said what I was going to do. I had a magnolia here just potted up for winter protection. It's over here now. It's just this, it's a Bracken's Brown Beauty. I wasn't ready to actually get it planted yet. It was supposed to go into a container and the container broke. It's up here on the hill actually. This really big, beautiful pot. It's a shame that that happened to it. I had, my dad bought that for me when I was like 12 years old. It's a really big deal because it's like my first like pot. You know, not like a plastic pot. So it, it is what it is. I am not throwing it away because I'm still convinced I might be able to glue it back together. That's why that didn't get potted up. Of course, take as long as possible to explain the most simple things. Welcome to my little potting area over here. So right here, this is a spindle palm and it's very big, really hard to get into frame. I have to kind of stand back here towards my fountain to get that into the shot. So sorry if that's kind of loud. But long story short, what I'm thinking I'm gonna do here with the spindle palm, because it is, it's very heavy. This is an extremely heavy palm tree. I think they potted this thing up in like pure sand. I don't know, but it doesn't want to stand up. And it, it needs to be repotted. So that's part of it, but I need to get in the right pot and everything first. But I also want it to stand up so that it will grow properly and look beautiful. So that leads back to over here, what I was talking about over here. So I've been working on getting that cherry tree trunk out. I need to uh, grab a pickaxe, I think, to get the roots out. But in the center there, in this middle area, I'm thinking I'm just gonna pop that spindle palm in there, put a little bit of mulch around the base of it. It's just, I'm not gonna plant it. The pot will still be sticking up and everything. We'll just give it some stability. And that whole area is bare anyways right now, as it is. So that's, I'm gonna give it a shot. Uh, the, okay, very heavy. Didn't keep in mind that there's an incline there, so. I might need to wait for a helper. I'm gonna try, but I'm not trying to hurt myself either. So let's see what happens here. And move some of these stones out of the way. I've also been pulling the mulch. I use a ton of mulch over here for everything and it's it's too much. It doesn't break down properly. So in the springtime, I go ahead and I gather it up over here in the wheelbarrow and I spread it more thinly in other areas and that just works out better that way. See that little hole? Depth and dimension just doesn't show on camera. Whew, here we go. Don't know why I don't just wait to catch my breath before filming, sorry. So I had started to dig this out a little bit further and I decided to stop because I realized I need to be able to lift this back out. Lifting it straight up is much more difficult than dragging it and dropping it in place. And even though it shouldn't matter because this is a temporary thing, it's not perfectly lined up with the middle of that window. In this angle, it doesn't look like it's even close, but if you're standing right in front of it, I don't know if I can get right in front of it, right about here. So yeah, you can't see that very well. But you can see that's not lined up. There's a pipe in the ground right through that center area, so that's as good as that's going to get. So, uh, yeah, I think it works. I'm just gonna come in here with my shovel and backfill the mulch around there, provide some stability, because that was the whole point. I just want this guy to stop blowing over. That's not good for it. Typically with my palms, if they're blowing around a lot, I just leave them. <laughs> if it's gonna be really windy, I'll just let them lay down. That's better than picking them up and having them fall back down, and picking them up and having them fall back down. They make stands, you can put these pots in little wire ones, but you gotta order them in big bulk packages and I just, I don't need that many. And then the other reason I wanna make sure that that was up a little bit is just like buy some off chance if I decide I want it to leave it there all season. Spindle palms don't like a lot of water, so I'd want this raised up. And there is like a lot of gravel in the earth and the soil that's down below that pot, so that's good. So I think it should be fine like this. That has been driving me crazy. Pick that up. So. <laughs> There it is, not perfect, so lots of cleaning to do, but it's a start and I'm fine with that. I'm happy with that, I'm not fine with that, it's it's exciting. Starting to get moving on things. The next thing I have to tackle out here is really just to finish the cleaning. I gotta get the stump out, pull the vines down. I have a broken pot back there, it needs to be fixed, and then I'm deciding which pots to keep and which to donate and which to trash over here. So it's just that kind of fun stuff. I don't think I'm gonna bore the vlog with that, but that's what's going to be going on. What's going on when I'm not filming, that is. Hey Tuck, you wanna say hi? 
Want to say hi? Will you apologize for pooping on the patio? Would you stop it, please? Okay, that's really cute. I'm already getting kind of attached to it. I need to plant perennials this year, but I can work the tropicals in with them too. That's okay, I can do that. Issue with this location, that cherry tree that's there used to be all the way up to that second window. Then what happened is the reflection from the pool started bouncing off of there, up there onto that window, and it just, it cooked that tree. Just absolutely just burnt it alive. So the palm tree being right there is a little bit risky. Just gonna kind of have to keep an eye on it. Another reason that I wouldn't be sinking it down. Regardless, I need to repot it. So that's something I, I don't want to just be like, okay, I like it there and leave it. So it needs to be repotted this year. Yeah, it's the next day. I failed. <laughs> I meant to vlog this morning. It's still morning though. I got up very early. I had to go get my hair cut. Got a date tomorrow night. Need to look good. And then look at Back here, plans happened. No, no surprise there, right? Hopefully the beginning of the vlog wasn't too long. People don't have to wait too long to see the plants. I think what I'm going to do is unload everything and then we can have a look at them in the backyard. It's actually sunny out, which isn't the best for filming, but that's all right. Cause, wow, these guys, they're looking pretty good. All right, yeah, let's do that. All right, miniature plant haul time. Oh, for starters, I grabbed a couple of these 12 packs of these Dragon's Wing Begonias. They're the pink variety. The pink flowers on them. These, I had a few weeks ago done a different vlog at a nursery that sells things like kind of in bulk. And I was saying that I might go back and pick some of those up. They're $2.50 a piece and little like, I want to say they're probably two or four inch pots. Financially, this made more sense. So I got two 12 packs of these. Even though I'm not ready to plant them yet, I just want to go ahead and grab them and just kind of have them just in case I can't find them again. Did I say two 12 packs? These are six packs. I can't remember what I said. But they look good. Really pretty. Um, where I'm going to put these, I'm not positive of. But what I do know for sure is that these are a lot bigger than those other ones too. You can see in here where they've been pinched back nicely. So they're nice and full. They're just a better start than the other ones. So good price and better looking plants and they have the pink the other one just had red and i like the pink on the dragon wings it's just a little bit more soft i think it's not quite as like loud in the landscape and okay i guess i do kind of know what i'm going to be doing with these i want to put them at a berm out front but i'm not positive that the sunlight's going to be right there i have to kind of think on that one for a minute but if i decide that that's not where they're going to go i have a lot of other places to use these so they're going to get used there's nothing wrong with them they're perfect then I grabbed three of these beautiful variegated fuchsias here. Let me pull the tag up right there. It's just upright firecracker. They're just the, that tropical, I believe, Gartmeister variety. But, you know, they, these can usually take a little bit more sun. Not a ton, but usually those Gartmeisters, I'm probably saying that wrong, are more heat tolerant. And I really enjoy the variegated ones. I guess I should say what I was planning on doing with these. I got a blue pot, a hanging basket from that Walmart video several weeks ago and I'm thinking I'm going to be using these and that I think they have a nice color to them and that'll look good in that blue pot. And then I grabbed another one of these canary wing dragon's wing begonia or it's just a canary wing but it's a you know derived from the dragon's wing begonia. I grabbed another one of these last week and this plant is actually the whole reason I went to the nursery just because after I got that one I was like you know I think I would like two of these because I have a couple of planters that I think these will look good in, so I'd want them to pair up together. And I'd only gotten the one, and they're not the easiest to find. So I got the last one they had. They had some other smaller ones, but I wanted one that was gonna match the size of the one I already have. So that's the canary wing over here. It's another lovely succulent. It's a tricolor jade. Has a decent amount of growth on it. It does have a couple of broken leaves, but that's not a big deal. Not a big deal at all, actually. So I'll grow this out. That'll look nice someday. And here we have a hibiscus who is, his nose broke, but it'll be all right. You know, the hibiscus flowers only last a few days anyways. Typically one day. This is, I think, a two-day flower, though. So that's good. The variety of this one is Orange Sunset Wind. It's really pretty. A nice orange color that fades in with some yellow and then to a darker red in the middle. And imagine, you know, if the flower were more fresh and not broken. I did that. I didn't buy it like that. It'd look a lot prettier. The Tradewinds Company, they have some really cool looking hibiscus. I had one for several years. It was called, I believe it's called Montego Breeze, which looked very similar to this one. Its growth was kind of lanky though, and I didn't, I wasn't crazy about how it ended up looking after a few years. So I just kind of ditched it because it wasn't special enough to me to keep it around with its odd growth form. 
Sometimes with these really neat hibiscuses, the hibis hibiscus, sometimes with the different varieties of hibiscus, you also want to pay attention to the growth habit. Hidden Valley Hibiscus, their website, describes their growth habit really well, so it lets you know if you're going to be getting a tall plant, one that grows more wide and outwards, a little bit more stout, and, and even if it's going to be something that's kind of a long, stemmy plant. But I, I really like things that are more full, which means you to the next hibiscus. Who does not have a name? It's just, you know, an assorted hibiscus, but oh, she's pretty. It's a double flower. I suppose that's really more of a semi-double flower, isn't it? But it's absolutely covered in blooms. The foliage on the plant is really thick and healthy. It's just a nice, lush, good-looking plant. That's what I like to see when I buy a hibiscus, something that has a nice round shape to it. It's very full. Covered in buds is always nice, that's helpful, because it's nice to be able to look at the flower and know what it's going to look like when you get it home, though there are variables that can affect that. You know, if you buy them when it's really cold outside, the flowers are going to be smaller and the color could be a little bit different than when things warm up. But it's also about the wood inside. Let me pull this closer. I like to look at the plant, I go in, have a look at the wood. I want to make sure that the, there's not too much going on with like yellowing leaves. There's one there, that's not that big of a deal. The wood on it's fairly thick in here. I can see there are a couple of plants, so it's a decent, nice, sturdy, thick plant. And has lots and lots of flowers on it. I, with hibiscus, the double flowers, the double flowered hibiscus don't usually get my attention. But the semi-double, I'm more okay with. The double ones, I think they're beautiful but they sometimes kind of hide that it's a hibiscus a little bit. Depending on the color variety, when it comes to something like that, I just would rather have like a Rose of Sharon because it gives a similar effect if you're just like looking for something that has a lot of flowers, it's very prolific, but maybe you're not going to necessarily see that beautiful tropical appeal that you get from a traditional Rosa Sinensis, the tropical hibiscus. Okay, so that's that one. And now over here, this one does not have any flowers on it. It has lots of buds. Nice, healthy growth in here in the wood, which looks good. I liked, I really liked actually that this one is double tagged. So it has a tag down here with the name on it, as well as a label up here with a picture on it. That's because sometimes you pick up a hibiscus that doesn't have flowers on it, and it'll have a picture on the tag, and when it blooms, it looks nothing like the picture, and they get mislabeled, or they're just, like, assorted, and it doesn't really say that on the tag. But these right here, this is from the Garden Debut, and the variety is called Pink Lemonade. Striking coral pink flowers with yellow ruffled edges bloom over dark green glossy foliage throughout the summer. Variety grows six to eight feet tall, four to six feet wide, excellent in containers, or as a colorful specimen. Yeah, that's what I like. You see those dimensions there? Six to eight feet tall, four to six feet wide. So it should be a nice kind of bushy looking plant. I guess saying bushy for a bush isn't the best description, but I think you know what I mean. And here's what they say the flowers are going to look like. I hope that that's true. This reminds me of one of my favorite varieties of hibiscus that was called Confection Perfection. And I had one many years ago, not a Confection Perfection, but one with similar flowers to this that I got down in Gulf Shores, Alabama, and it was just labeled as Cajun Hibiscus, which is like a series of really pretty hibiscus, but they have really wonky growth. Like they grow out really wide and they just, they don't look quite right to me, those, the Cajun ones, at least they didn't back then. I'm talking a long time ago, at least, at least 10 years ago, because I was a teenager at the time. So, but this right here, it looks like it has a nice growth form to it, especially from the description. And that flower is very similar, like I said, to that Confection Perfection or that one that I never found a variety name on, but that's beautiful. I don't know about the red center, but I think I can overlook that if the flowers actually look like this and they're that pretty. But I guess time will tell. I have a thing about the dark centers on hibiscus. If they have lots of other tropical colors in them, I'm fine with it. But if it's just like a white flower with a red center, and there's a variety of hibiscus that was really popular in like the bulk stores for a few years that was like a whitish pink flower with a very dark eye in here, and I did not like them. And it was all anybody sold for a long time. The reason I didn't like them though was because to me, it just looked kind of like a glorified Rose of Sharon, which is the Hibiscus Syracruz, as opposed to the Rosa Sinensis, the Hibiscus Syracuse, the Rose of Sharon, generally hardy to zone 5. So why buy a new one every single year if you can just plant a perennial that looks the same, right? That was kind of my thing with that. Because it's like, why would I... That doesn't make any sense to me. They don't look exactly the same. The other one that I'm talking about did look more tropical, but it still was like close enough to a Rose of Sharon. I was like, why, why bother? I don't get that. So I'm happy that I'm seeing this year at the nurseries that there are a lot more varieties of hibiscus flowers that are 
more tropical looking and pretty because that's what you want a hibiscus for right is that tropical appeal so that's what i got here three different hibiscus this little guy i'm going to plant up over in an area where the tortoise can get to it depending on how prolific the blooms are that or i'll just go like Lowe's or home depot and just get a cheap hibiscus shrub that i don't care about what it looks like because the tortoise colby who's inside today it's kind of chilly but uh, he eats a lot of hibiscus and my big hibiscus tree i have in the grow space I used the systemic on because I just, I wasn't thinking, so he can't eat that anymore. That's not safe for him. So I wanted to get some more hibiscus that aren't, you know, infused with chemicals. And then next I grabbed this beautiful Mediterranean fan palm. This guy has a decent amount of trunk in it for the size of the plant and the price. You know, usually if you're spending less than $50 on a Mediterranean fan palm, they're typically pretty small, but this is a really good size. I mean, it's a great size for what it is. I've wanted to get a new Mediterranean fan palm for a long time. The trick with these guys, the issue that I end up having with them is that they don't like moisture getting into that crown. So I have to remember wherever I place this, it's not going to be anywhere where my misters or my sprinklers or anything are going to be getting in there because my last one rotted because of that. And I had moved it and thought that it was okay, but apparently there was just enough coming through that it got in there and rotted them out. So this part needs to stay dry. And uh, yeah, they're nice nice tough palms. I really like them. They're beautiful actually. The trunks of them remind me a lot of a Robolini, but they have really pretty um, fan palm type foliage on them. Looks good. And an easy to grow palm tree. They don't like a lot of cold, but they're good to zone eight typically. And they don't need a ton of water. They're very drought tolerant. I mean, it's a Mediterranean fan palm. They do like high light though. So indoors want to give it lots and lots of sunlight, but it doesn't need to be watered too much. The drier air isn't going to bother it a lot but they're very slow growing and they are toothed. So it's something that can be a little bit hazardous, but it's nothing like a Robolini where they have big old needles in there that'll like poke your eye out. These are the Primo Peachberry Ice from Proven Winners. They get really pretty orange foliage in them, on them, not in them. And it has like white veining in it. It's gonna be really pretty. I'm assuming that this coloration they have right now is just because of the time of year and the cooler temperatures. When they get moved into more sun, I think that, that that's gonna color up very nicely. I've had my eye out for these. I'm really excited that I got a hold of them. And then lastly, look at this butte. This was a great deal. This is, I believe, it's an Australian tree fern. Could be a Tasmanian, I don't know. But uh, it was a really good price. Has a really pretty fresh frond up here getting ready to unfurl. It has a lot of bad foliage on it that I need to trim out, but all of the ones they had at the nursery did. So I grabbed the best one that they had and this is actually similar to the Mediterranean fan palm and that this crown. I noticed when I've had these before, if too much moisture can get into that crown, it can cause a lot of problems. So need to keep that soil nice and moist for it, but the inside needs to stay fairly dry. I don't want to put it somewhere where the sprinkler is going to be soaking it. But isn't it pretty? Love a tree fern. It's still obviously a baby. Lots of growing to do, but with the right conditions, these will grow fairly quickly. All right, so that's everything as far as the plants go. Speaking of ferns, though, I know there was no Fern Friday yesterday. I'm that my computer's still broken, and I have to wear headphones in order to edit, and I just, I can't. I hate wearing headphones. I, I can't do it. I mean, it's fine for listening to music for a little while, but when editing the videos, it's like a, like, minimum four-hour process, usually far, far, far more than that. So I just, I couldn't do it, guys. I'm sorry. But Dell did contact me today to tell me that there's, like, a team of engineers working on something. They've already... Like, we've been back and forth them trying to get this computer fixed, and it looks like it's just some kind of incompatibility with a software release that Windows had. So they told me that May 1st they'll be putting out a new driver update that should fix the problem, because it's not just me. Apparently other people are having the same problem. I'm frustrated about it. It set me back as far as releasing videos ago. The only reason I bought the new computer was to be able to edit videos, to edit them better, as opposed to using my old tablet, and before that I was using my phone, which did work fine, but I wanted to kind of step things up a bit and I did for like six weeks and then the that update happened so once that's fixed fingers crossed May 1st that will solve the problem and everything will be okay and I'll be able to start putting the videos out more often instead of just twice a week because I really prefer three or four times a week because there are a lot of projects and things that can be talked about but not when things are kind of wonky the way they have been yeah Hopefully soon, just, you know, like another week or so, and things will be back to normal with that. Sorry about it, by the way. I almost did film a Fern Friday, and I was like, I'll just use the vlog camera. It'll be a little bit more casual, but that's okay. The problem is I've had a lot of people requesting me to do a video on, like, pests with the ferns, and I don't, 
I have plenty of pests, but none of them are on my fern. So I'm trying to figure out how to do that video without it being really, really boring and just looking at a fern that doesn't have scale or anything on it. Uh, but you, as far as pictures go, it's complicated using other people's pictures. So I usually do the Google search because it's kind of in the gray area of fair use because it's, it's a public domain. Everybody can Google those pictures. But I don't know. That's something I'm still toying with. That, that's enough of that, though. We need to move on. There's other things to do. Back to the spindle palm. I had talked about needing to repot this just, I don't know, minutes ago. It was really yesterday, but just minutes ago for you guys. And uh, I went ahead and measured the pot. It looks like this is a 20 gallon pot. It's roughly 18 inches in diameter. So I got on Amazon and I have ordered a 25 gallon pot. So it'll be a modest step up, but that's about right for a palm tree. So that'll be good for that. Then I can get it repotted next week and get going because I can't really start doing much in here until I repot that. Oh, I guess I didn't, oh, I'm sorry. That was like 30 seconds of just staring at the ground. I, I didn't explain. I decided I'm gonna keep it there, which I mean, hey, that's probably no surprise. That's not really very straight, but that's okay. Neither am I. It's fine. When I was looking through the windows and everything this morning from in the house, I was like, oh, that looks nice. And it's so easy just to pop that in the ground. Like I said, I won't be burying it all the way because they don't like a lot of moisture and there's sprinklers and things over here. So it'll be better for it to be elevated. That pot will come in. I'll get it repotted. That'll get more permanently. It'll be pretty much just like this in the ground. And then I can start planting up around it with annuals and perennials and start to get things looking nice over here, which I'm really excited about. I'm still working on getting this dang stump out. I think I need to go get a hatchet or a saw or something to like really get that root ball out. I'm going to want to plant here so that it's got to go. Same thing with this Alberta spruce. It's done. It's, I've been saying that I feel like for a couple years, it's going to go. I'm cutting that out as well. So this will be a very big, wide open space in here with lots and lots of potential. Right up here, I have these recurvifolias, the softleaf yuccas, which are a zone seven. I'm in 6A, 6B, kind of right on the border. And I've had one in my front yard for years. And it's looking a lot better since I put on drip last year. That was in one of the vlogs. But it just kind of like hasn't done much over the years. But I never, it was in a spot where nothing grows. These have already put on growth and are looking great. So these two right here, I'm going to go right here where this cherry tree stump is. And those will get about four to six feet high. They get really nice thick trunks on them. Look kind of similar to a ponytail palm. And they're tough. I mean, they're yuccas. They grow so easily they're very low maintenance the first few winters i may need to wrap them to protect them from extreme winds or heavy precipitation but i'm not too concerned about that this is a fairly warm area over here the cannas the bananas the crinum lilies there's some um hedichiums over here too which are the butterfly gingers it's the coronarium the white butterfly gingers which are all starting to come up i do put a lot of mulch here so that does help a lot and that's the other thing i've been working on is excavating the mulch because it's too much to break down so what i do with that is i dig it all up wheelbarrow it over to the berm and i spread it more thin i put it down in a thin layer so it can break down more efficiently if you leave it in these really big tall piles and just being like a fungus thing you have to constantly turn it and i don't feel like doing that because i need to plant this area up so that's what's going on here i feel like i'm talking so fast but they just there's so much i have to say i'm sorry and those are going to be going over in here where i'm removing this azalea and the bamboo and everything this whole garden this whole bed from all the way here to back there where i was just showing you things are getting wiped pretty clean here this year so that's something i'm gonna be working on this weekend and then come next week's vlog hopefully things will be more of a blank canvas and i can hopefully get started planting i think we're just about there it's like i said my step i'm on right now i've already i've been cutting down trees and doing all kinds of things that are just kind of boring and slowly tidying up but it's accelerating quickly but like i said see this big pile of mulch on the bananas i gotta break that down it's too much this though i'll probably spread over here instead of haul it over to my berm so down here i have those mule palms this is i'm just the, like this apparently this vlog is just talking about projects sometimes i just gotta think out loud and i always like everybody's suggestions and everything it's good getting everybody's feedback so these mule palms they need to be repotted, but they have to fit inside of these planters that are right here on the edge of the pool. I have these pots that I got for the Adenidia palms, the ones that the frost killed off last year. And I think these will fit. I know that doesn't look like it fits. It's a 24 inch pot. The inside diameter of these blue pots is 20 inches. But I think that the way that this, the angle of the pot, I think that it's tapered just right where it'll fit. This part right here is going to stick up, of course, but I think that's fine. I'll just make sure it's full of trailers, which I would do anyways, and that'll cover that. And even if it didn't, the gray and the blue is not going to look terrible together, then the fall can just lift them back out. Those are going to be so happy 
to get repotted. I'm excited to do that. I just like with the spindle palm, I'm going to wait until next week because when that other pot comes in, then I can repot everything together. I need to get some sand and things. I like to kind of mix my own soil for the palm trees, but I'm thinking this is going to work. I don't know why it wouldn't. I, this is a really good bump up in size for the mule palms too. So they'll be able to stay in here for a few years and they'll look so much better. I have a feeling when these get repotted, they'll flush out with lots of nice new growth. Okay, last part here. I have been talking about this dang berm here for, I feel like, years, because I have. It's been a struggle for you to figure out what to do here. And I think I've decided what I'm going to plant in here. There were a lot of great suggestions from everybody when I've talked about this in other vlogs, and I really do appreciate it. Thank you for all those suggestions. What I've decided on, though, because the issue is that this is very shady during the summertime and super sunny during the wintertime when there isn't aren't leaves up on the trees. Something like the abravadas, arborvitaes, however you want to say it, that's not going to work here. They need more sun. I want to make sure it's evergreen so something that's deciduous isn't really going to work either. But it occurred to me, I don't know why it took me so long, that skip laurel, those will do fantastic. The nurseries around here have them. They get I see varying sizes, but it, they should get a minimum 10 feet high, which is going to be just about perfect here. They get like 5 to 8 feet wide, I believe, so it's great for hedging, and they'll do okay in the shade, which is great. The wintertime sun might be a different story. I may have to go ahead and put bags over them, which I'll probably do the first winter anyways, because there is zone 6. I'm in zone 6, and this is raised up berm. It's a very cold spot in my yard, because the breeze, the wind just comes blowing through here in the wintertime. So uh, chances are their first winter in the ground, I'd bag them up anyways. And by bag them up, I mean they make like frost cloth type blankets like that have a pull cord on them. You don't even have to use the ones with the pull cords, but they come in white and green and different colors. So I would probably be putting one of those over them, over the ones I plant here. Anyways, just to be safe, uh, to help prevent them from scorching in the wind and then burning in the sun during that first winter time. So that's what I'm thinking I'm going to do. I just have to track them down, find the right price for the biggest ones I can get, and I'll be able to do this berm, which I am so excited about. They are kind of pricey, though. For what they are, though, the prices aren't too bad, but I want big ones, like really big ones. I'm thinking I'm going to want them to be lined up from the diving board here, more than likely, even though the diving board isn't perfectly centered, like there's less space on this side of the berm than on that side with the diving board. The that being down here, I know these I know these need to be scrubbed and cleaned. I'm going to get on that too. Every year I usually brush them down, use soap and water, and then I scotch guard them. So I just haven't gotten around to it yet because the weather hasn't been really that great the last few days. So, But with the berm, I'm thinking five of them. So one here in the center, and then two, three, four, and five. Well, yeah, I don't know if there's going to be space for that. I'll have to play around with that. I still think five is going to be the number, though. I would like to go with six, but they're a little bit expensive they're really okay they're not expensive but it's just different spending a lot of money on a bush than buying a palm tree for me <laughs> you know to so spend 70 dollars on a bush and i'm like okay there's a bush as opposed to a palm tree and i'm like oh my gosh palm tree i don't appreciate the shrubs i really do and that's why i'm really excited to do this actually it's going to be so nice having privacy just even just having a wall here it'll just look so much better i'll be able to make things look tidier and more clean I had talked about, well I didn't talk about, but I commented in the video where I was talking about the berm, because I also have some ferns that are going to go in here about, I was also going to plant stuff with impatience. I'm still on the fence about that one, just because the pettis that's here are going to fill this in. I mean, th that's about as much spreading as they'll do for the year. Usually I, I notice the spreading in the springtime when they come back up, so I don't know how much the impatience would get shaded by them. I just think that since the pettis haven't made their way all the way down this other end here, might look a little weird, so I might just like plant them in patches. We'll see. Okay, last thing as far as all the plans and talking, kind of creating out loud with you guys. These junipers, they gotta go. There's one on each side of the fence. They just look absolutely horrible. These are the sky point, I think is what they are. Let me look at the tag. <sighs> Should not be putting my arm in here. These make me so itchy. Blue arrow junipers. They're supposed to have like a nice slender appearance to them. I don't think they're getting the sun here for that, and I think the wind's just too much. I mean, they just, they look horrible. I mean, don't they? They look terrible. They, those have got to go. So, just look, look. It's so gross. I hate them. So, what I'm thinking I'm going to do here is put bamboo on each side of the fence. I'm going to sink a liner in, a nice big area, lots and lots of liner so it can't overspread, and have, like, nice big columns of bamboo coming up on each side of the fence. 
hopefully it doesn't like bop people in the head when they're walking through there. I suppose that that could be like a bit of a liability issue. I don't know, but it's going to be pretty. So I don't care. Just watch your head. It'll be fine. I'll put a sign on the fence. that says like, watch out for bamboo. I'm kidding. I don't think it'll be a problem. So yeah, right? Bamboo. I think it's going to look great there. I have this pot. Isn't that pretty? Isn't that pretty? I don't know what to do with it though. I've had it for a while. I'm probably going to put succulents in it, like fill in around the edge. That's a whole different, don't worry about it. And I think it's time, almost move the plants out. I know I had said I was going to do that in this week's vlog, but I really think if I just wait a few more days, the trees outside will flush out more because I can't just take these and stick them straight into the sun. They'll burn. They will scorch. Happens every single year. I need to just order some shade cloth already and set up an area to acclimate the plants in a little bit better. But um, that needs to be done. And I can already, you can see the mealybugs from here. You see that white powder? Those are mealybugs. So the alacages are probably getting a full on prune and probably a systemic because I'm just absolutely over dealing with these things, a whole repotting. So moving them out isn't going to be as simple this year as it is in other years where I just bring them out and it's done. I have a lot of work to do to eradicate this mealybug problem. Normally, I mean, really just moving them outside makes a big difference because nature handles a lot of them but I have to stay on top of it this year, so it's not a problem again next winter. I'm done with it. I don't want to deal with it. If it continues to be a problem with some of these plants where it's habitually a problem, like the Eureka palms, I am tempted to maybe just be like, bye, and get rid of them because I'm, I'm sick of it. So uh, yeah, that's what's going on here. I'll be bringing them out, moving them out here into the driveway, and look at what the squirrels did to my topiary. Isn't that pathetic? Anyways, I'll be moving them out here, giving everybody a really good blast lots of sprays and then I guess I'll give it a few days not in the driveway I'll move them to the shade and see what the mealbug situation is like uh, that'll require several treatments and then last resort I'll use a systemic because the systemics aren't great for the environment so it is a last resort but it might come down to that for a lot of these plants so that's why I'm not moving the plants out yet because I think I want to do it right and it's going to be a little bit more complicated than just moving them out. And I have started moving some of the things out. Some of the spindles are out. Well, all the spindle palms are out. Wimbles have been out for a really long time. The jacanias and things are sort of like spread and scrambled over here. This is an area that gets morning sun, so things have been doing okay over here. It's not too, too sunny. There's a little bit of scorching, which is why I went ahead and I moved some other things over here to help shade these guys a little bit the cordolins and these are new though i didn't overwinter these and um at the nursery they had them sitting on asphalt which i thought was a little bit odd because they would burn but i figured that meant maybe that they had been acclimated but when i was back at that nursery today those weren't there anymore and i that's why so yeah oh well whoops <laughs> i've also started moving some of the vandas out i've been bringing them out giving them heavy soaks spraying them off and everything and then uh, in a few days i'm going to be moving them up over here but i'm deciding if i'm going to keep these trellises or get rid of them and like actually buy trellis material the wood lattice and put that up i think it might look nicer these were on clearance and once they're covered in orchids you can't really even tell what they look like i know it looks terrible right now but once they're covered it's just like a wall of orchids and looks fine the problem with the lattice is i don't think it's going to let enough light through on the other end which could be sort of a pain so it's something i'm playing around with in my head Oh, and if you were wondering why this has been a lot of talking about what I'm doing instead of just like, hey, why don't you go ahead and cut these things out and whatnot, it's because one, I kind of like to brainstorm out loud, so that's part of it, and two, because the tools I need, the saws and the pickaxe and all of those things are blocked by tables full of plants in my garage. So I need to get the plants moved outside before I can get going with that. And I, you know, like I said, I got the spruces got to go, cherry tree, there's an azalea, the two junipers over there. Those all have to go. And I really, I would like to have more of a clean blank slate. So I, I want to do that first for sure. So that's, that's what that's all about. Again. Hey, baby girl. Say hi to everyone. Very back there. There we go. Oh, you such a pretty pumpkin. Yes, you are. He's so popular. Everybody loves you so much, pumpkin. Yes, you are. I don't want to end the vlog without showing some kitty time. Hey, bud. Thanks, sweetie. You such a good girl. Thanks for the kisses. Thank you so much. All right, say bye-bye, pumpkin. Okay. Good job. And real quick, I did go ahead and, I mean, you can see what I did right here. I went ahead and I dug out some more soil from there and you can see it fits in there. Sure, it doesn't look perfect, but 
I'm fine with it because this gives me the ability in the fall time to just lift the plants back out and move them in. I don't have to risk hurting myself or breaking these pots, removing these big pots in and out every year. So I, that's why I prefer to do an insert like this, just be able to drop things in. Works much better. And when I have all the trailers over the sides, like that's not really even going to be very noticeable. I don't think. I'm probably either going to do petunias or portulaca or something like that around the sides this year. No sweet potato vines. They looked cool last year. Like they looked amazing. They just got huge, but they took over and just, it was too much. They strangled out the petunias and I'd rather have the petunias than the, I'd like to have both, but they didn't go well together. It's just, it wasn't a good combo. So probably just petunias with something else. I don't know. That's something I still have a little bit of time to brainstorm over. Not too much though, because next week in a few days, I'll uh, be going to Lowe's to get things ready so I can repot these palm trees and everything and start doing the stuff, which I'm pretty excited about. Really excited about next week or so things are gonna be looking incredibly different out here i even think i figured out what i'm doing here with these pots so that's great because I, I gotta get them out of here it looks terrible and then since i don't have four matching palms i have the two mule palms which i've talked about that little dilemma before because it would cost a fortune to buy two more that are the same size as these guys these are very expensive palm trees i had them for fairly cheap years ago but they were very small they've grown quite a bit to get them in that size would probably be between five and eight hundred dollars a pop, which I'm, I'm not, not, nope, 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 not doing that. I would rather just suck it up and not have the pots match. I'm fine with that. So I might actually put my white bird of paradise in each one of those, maybe, or some spindles. These spindles back here, the two little guys, those defoliated completely from the frost last year, so they're okay. Now that they're outside, they'll go ahead and flush out and look fine here with the next few weeks. And that cushion, why do I keep forgetting to push that cushion up? I noticed it in last week's vlog, and I was like, why did I just not do anything about that? That's ridiculous. Just gotta push that up. What's wrong with me? Like, sometimes there are just some things you don't see, or you get used to seeing in person, but not on camera. Uh, this honeysuckle, that I'm gonna need to trim that out of there. That's not gonna work. What you doing? What you doing? You smell the new plants? You smell those new plants, Tuck? You smell those new plants, Tucker? Yeah, you good boy. Oh, you such a good boy. You say hi, Tucker, say hi. Say hello. Say hello. You just want love. This has been his new thing. Hello. Hi. That's what Tuckers do. And he's almost knocked me over a few times, but he really likes... I think maybe it's his arthritis, so it kind of helps him balance a little bit. I know this is a very weird angle. I apologize. There you go. Uh, but it's new, and I think that that way he can, like, not fall over. He's an old man. Yes, you are. He's such a good boy. So, yeah, I hope everybody's doing well. Sorry that, like, not a lot happened, but it's just I kind of need to get the rundown going and kind of explain things. That's all. And then, like I had mentioned, moving the... That's disgusting. You don't need to look at the pooper scooper. <laughs> and then moving the plants out. That's going to make a big difference. I can get my tools out and start cutting all the dead stuff out and clearing things and get to planting. I cannot wait so happy. And as always, thank you everybody for hanging out. Hit me up on my social media. It's linked down below. I use Instagram more than anything else. I'll follow you back that way you can look at each other's pictures and everything. I have a blast doing that. And of course, leaving a thumbs up makes a big difference for the channel and I really, really do appreciate it. So thank you and subscribe as well and hit the notification bell because I upload multiple times a week. I am loving these fuchsias. They're so pretty. I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, a great life. Everything's just going beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.